Now, in the previous video, I showed you how the Dijkstra algorithm is superior to the flood fill algorithm and how it actually works. Now, we'll try to implement this in C Sharp. Now, due to the fact that the Dijkstra algorithm is just an improvement of the flood fill algorithm, at least the way I implemented it, I can plain and simple copy all the code from the flood fill algorithm in here. And we will now adapt this code so uh, it will work a little bit better. Now, the first change we're going to make is that we will swap out this visited list with uh, this dictionary that uh, tells us what the movement cost for each tile is. Now, the second change we're going to make is instead of a normal queue, we're going to use a priority queue. And if you code this yourself, this won't work out of the box. Uh, this is actually a class I wrote myself. You can look up the internet. Uh, there are a few implementations of this priority queue. It's not too hard to, to code this on your own. So it just works as I said. It has a queue of tiles and if you enqueue something, you also need to specify a priority. So if I do this here, I need to specify the priority, which will be zero or one, it doesn't matter. Um, and that way we have uh, one tile which has an extremely high priority in this queue. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to set the cost to reach tile of the goal. We set this to zero because if we are at the goal, there is no cost to reach the goal, of course. <laughs> All right, next, this can stay the same. This can stay the same. However, in this for each, we will create a new line of code. So what this line does is I generate a new variable which saves the cost to move towards the neighbor. Now let me show you this in a graphical way. Now if I currently want to determine the cost of this tile, uh, I take the curve tile, which is this, so this cost is one, and I add the cost of the tile I'm currently inspecting. So this is the neighbor, uh, which has a cost of five. So the total cost to move to this location will be six. And that's what we are calculating here. Now, let me just show you what this cost or how this cost is implemented. Uh, in the tile class, I just created a, a property which returns an integer value based on the tile type it is. In my case, I only have plains and uh, wood or a forest. Um, if you have mountains, hills or a swamp or whatever, you could add these things here, of course, too. All right, so this line needs to be shaken up quite a bit. So firstly, we no longer have the visited list. Instead, we have the cost to reach tile. So let's change this to the cost to reach tile. And this no longer works uh, that way because it's a dictionary. So I need to tell it if it doesn't contain uh, the neighbor already, we should add it. And we need to change this quite significantly too, because um, this algorithm, or this is the main difference on how this algorithm works. Let me show you this in the graphic again. Now I'll undo the stuff. So if I'm currently here and I'm uh, getting to my start, then I know my start has one plus five plus one. So I need seven movement points to reach the start. Now, if I program this like I did it in here, uh, it will no longer look for better ways to reach the start. And this is a problem here because if I don't move this way, but instead I move this way, I have a total movement cost, not of seven, but of three, which is much better because that way I'm faster and I definitely should take this way instead of 
the way through the forest. We need to take this into account and that's why we need to change this up. So instead of having this end, we take an or and we say if the new cost is smaller than the current cost to reach the tile. Right, so that way uh, we also check if there are better ways to reach our neighbors than the ways we've already calculated. Okay, so now we need to add some lines of code in here too. Uh, we need to tell it that the cost to reach the neighbor is the new cost. So we overwrite uh, the previously higher cost that may have been in there. Also, I will create a priority and I set this priority to the new cost. And then I say, um, and queue this neighbor with this uh, with the cost as a priority. So now you might say this is an unnecessary line of code. Um, we'll keep it in here because we will change this up slightly once we hit the A star algorithm. So we can leave this line of code and then we have one more line of code that I like to add. And what this does, it just creates a text field in the tile which tells me the cost that I need to reach this destination. So next I can remove this line of code because I already do that um, up here and I changed it up slightly. Uh, also, I need to change this to next tile to go, contains key uh, with this. And the rest should actually work out exactly like in the previous example. So let's see uh, if this code already works. I start here and I want to go over here and I mean, it works, it finds the shortest path, but I actually didn't get the benefits of Dijkstra because he uh, calculated all of the tiles that we have here. And that's really unnecessary. So let's change the code slightly so this works better. Now I'm back here in the code again and I need to scroll up a little bit. And what I want to do is if I uh, get with the current tile to the starting tile, I need to break. I need to stop looking further because if that's the case, I can be sure I tested out all the ways to this tile and then I can just stop looking further. And if I now go back into Unity and I restart the game and check it out again, it should work. So if I start here and go here, you can see uh, around the end part, it looks around, but once it found the starting position, it won't go any further. So you will see no higher cost than the eight. Even better, if I add some wood, like here, you can see that uh, the calculation changes and he, he looks at even fewer tiles uh, because it's unnecessary, because it would take so many movement points to get past here that, uh, yeah, it's totally unnecessary to look for this. And with that, we have implemented the Dijkstra algorithm. Now in the next video, we're going to take our pathfinding algorithm even one step further and make the Dijkstra algorithm to the A star algorithm, uh, which spoiler alert is just one line of code. <laughs> but this one line of code will make quite a hefty difference in the performance of the algorithm. Mm -hmm.